Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. The real estate market is in an incredible uh, situation today, and so I thought I'd check in with uh, a gentleman that I've got a ton of respect for, a real expert in the uh, real estate market, Akbar Zera is his name. He's president, founder of Kingsway uh, Realty. Um, Akbar, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I was saying that the condo market is in distress. You were saying... It's worse. It's panic. Is that correct? Well, mostly I'm referring to pre-construction condos, high-rise condos. Um, it is uh, it is disaster, yes. Why? What's going on? Well, in the past, I would say about three weeks. Um, so I would say a month, actually. I got at least 20 calls from the brokerage, top-notch brokerage that they were, or they are, rather, uh, specializing in selling condos, and they say, what's going on, Akbar? What's happening? The sale is down. Then I have been um, pretty much researching, as you know, I, I dig in and find out information from multiple sources, uh, finding out that's what's going on with the stats of uh, pre-construction sales. So um, it is down. It is down significantly. It's, it's a numbers, just brain damaging. Seriously, when you think about it, my brain doesn't even think about how low it is. We're talking about 75% drop in sales of pre-construction condos. 75% drop in volume, but what about price? That's the thing, you know, so we're going to look at a few things. If our listeners, they can stay, stick around to the end of this show, pretty much that I'm going to give you 10 reasons where we are at, why, why we end up where we are at with these pre-construction condos and the sales and what have you. 10 reasons. Okay. So let's start with, first of all, in 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 the report that I got, it's it's been about one thousand six hundred eighty eight sales in second quarter of this year, which is sixty six percent compared to last year, sixty six percent down comparing to the first two quarter of the year. First half this is of the year sales of, of pre construction condos. Sales. I'm talking about sales of pre construction. That's the subject we're talking about. Okay, and comparing to twenty years ago, it's like seventy five percent low. That's a scare. Even though we are talking about the housing crisis and the builders, developers, they should build more, but I have a bad news. Builders are parking, basically. They are not planning to launch any new projects. They won't be able to make it. They won't be able to sell it. They won't be able to make a profit, Brian, out of the sale. They're going to be closed. Matter of fact, in a year and a half, we had 27 projects that was canceled by the developer. And the reason, at the end of the day, they will not be able to build it and not make profit. They would be losing money if they continue building. So they are and canceling is, and giving the deposit back to the buyers. They're giving deposits back to the buyers. Correct. Now, is this is this uh, Toronto or the the four one six and the nine hundred five or it's a it's is... a four one six and nine hundred five. All my researches are based on where we are at. Where our company, our real estate business, is serving Ontario mostly nine hundred five and GTA. So pretty what much. about Hamilton? Hamilton is part of the nine hundred five. Yes, yes, that's part. Of and but does this go as far as London, Windsor, Ottawa? Yes, pretty much nine hundred five and surrounding area. So, so the whole southern Ontario. Correct. Correct. We're not talking about Sarnia on outside, you know, Timbuktu, but the immediate GTA and 905 all the way to even Niagara Fall to, uh, you know, London, Waterloo, um, you know, in that area. So s sales volume of pre-construction condos is way down. I it understand that the inventory of condos that are built and and ready for occupancy has increased dramatically as well. Right. There are there are buildings that um, they launched three years ago, Brian, and still they have inventory on hand that they are trying to get rid of. There's no condo development that I would say in the last three years that says, okay, completely sold out. I don't buy into that because I know they have it. So, mm -hmm. so you've got a, no sorry. sales uh, or dramatically lower sales of pre-construction condos. You've got a increased inventory. I don't know if you've got better statistics than I, but I was told that you've got 28 months of inventory of condominiums that are built I mean, and, and 
and ready for occupancy uh, and or I guess resale condos um, on the market versus an average of about six to eight months. Uh, so you've Correct. got almost two years of excess inventory that is uh, for sale on the market. Um, Correct. And people aren't buying. People are not buying. So um, as I said, if people they start, are listening, they stick around until the end of the show. I got 10 reasons that I, with my own observation and my own research is that I'm going to share with our audience that why, where we are at and how we end up here. So, and, but let's talk about more as, as the, the buyers. So the first thing is the buyers who were, who were buying these pre-construction condos. If you look at who were the ideal clients per se for these pre-construction clients. Number one, they were for investors and investors in general. You agree with me that most of people they buy, they were buying the condos, uh, Brian, for, for $400,000, $500,000, you know, hundred thousand dollar down payment, twenty percent down payment, and with the hope, not with the hope, actually, they were doing it as a business. They were waiting a year later as the pre-construction sales are going on. They would flip it on an assignment, and they would make a profit anywhere from fifty thousand, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar profit on a purchase of pre-construction sale, and that was a big business and big income for investors like you and me that we would buy it and flip. It. Fair enough. Yep. So that was a big business, actually. That was the rush. That was where everybody was rushing. Okay, I'm going to buy it. And you would see uh, even pre-launch, they were selling half of the building, 30% of the building. They were sold pre-launch before launching it to the market. Right? So that- And, and, was... and these, these investors um, that were, you know, regular people were doing more than one of these, right? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Some client, they would buy four or five. Because it was profitable, it just made sense. And I've it been just, told that uh, that often they were financed by way of uh, of borrowing under home equity lines of credit, so that they were effectively a borrowing against their principal residence and yes. putting their principal residence at risk yes. um, as they were borrowing that hundred thousand dollars or whatever fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars, whatever it was that they needed to make those deposits. Yeah, it wasn't a risk, really. They would take the equity they borrow against the equity that they had in their house, and they would, as a deposit, in order to 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 conf to firm up the deal with the developer, so they can go further and then done, and then wait until closing date to pay the balance of the price. However, that changed, changed in a big way. In which way that first of all, there's no profit anymore. Right now, we are facing with the challenges. I have a group of realtors on my WhatsApp group that we have about 1,800 of them on my, my WhatsApp group where the agents are posting uh, these pre-construction um, uh, assignments where Akbar bought a unit, now wants to assign it. Not that I don't make money now. They are walking away, Brian, with 300000 $200,000, of that money that they put a deposit they're begging people to come and take over. They cannot close because they are not qualified to get the mortgage or for other circumstances. They just want to walk away from the deal. There's thousands of them, not one, two, hundred. There's thousands of them that people But, but they can't them. walk away because they've signed a purchase agreement. Exactly. Correct? They want to, Brian to come and buy it, so take over that contract. They want to get, get out of it. What happens if uh, they don't assign it and they can't no. get the money to close and occupy? Right. So number one, they are going in default. When they're going in default, as per all the APS of the uh, condominium transaction that they made, the personal sale agreement that they made with the developer, they lose their deposit. The builder takes the deposit, so they forfeit. Second challenge is that the builder goes and sues them for, for default because they did not close the deal, and they sue them for damages. So if Brian bought a condo for $800,000 two years ago, three years ago, that's the price tag on it. And you come, now it's a closing date, you default on your closing. The builder basically takes your deposit, you forfeit your deposit, and the builder goes and sues you. I have scenarios that agents are calling me for help, asking for help, what should the buyer do? What 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 are they saying? Well, they have no choice. They're in default. So and then the builder says that eight hundred thousand, they got a they got an inventory of thousands of other buyers in their database, they sell that eight hundred thousand dollar. A condo for seven fifty, and then they charge the original buyer for fifty thousand dollar plus the legal fees plus any loss and mortgages that they carried and so on. Suddenly, you, because you are in default now, not only fifty thousand dollars, now you owe them hundred thousand dollars. They take you to court. Simple as that. 
and they have a right to do that. A lot of agents, when they're selling the condos, they don't explain, they fail to explain those things that what if, what if you cannot, what if your circumstances changes from now to three years, four years from now that you're buying this pre-construction condo, what's going to happen if you default on closing, you, you forfeit the closing? Do, do the brokers have yes. any risk? Can the, the purchasers uh, come back uh, to the brokers that didn't give not them any really because Not really, because what happened is that we are not directly representing the buyer to the to in the transaction. What we are doing that what they call it, they call it the broker referral agreement that we sign with the developer. We just referring say Brian is the buyer. We're referring Brian to the developer, and we're getting commission as a referral fee from client. Technically, they are not our clients. We have no um, you know duty to explain, but in my book, in my life, by doing this for 35 years, you are supposed to, you are the agent, you are introducing these people to these developers, you have to, it's your duty, in my opinion, to go through all those things, through the, all the risks and opportunities, explain it to the buyer so they know what they're going to be facing. Even though, yeah, the question, to, to answer your question directly, the buyer cannot go sue the agent because agent is just a referral. There's no buyer agency per se signed between the client, the buyer, and the broker. Does does the real estate broker still get the commission, or do they have to pay the commission yes. back, or do they not get the commission yet? Yes, there's just circumstances, different circumstances. Some builders they grant, they say, okay, you got the commission. Usually, commission the way it works, Brian, is that they pay in two installments. So first installment is when uh, Brian firms up the deal. Thirty, sixty days after that, they give you a half of the commission usually normally is four percent commission on a transaction that you buy. So two percent comes to us um, after the deal is firmed up, meaning you bring in the the, the, the mortgage uh, approval and all the documentation. That the deal is firm. Your ten days uh, period um, gone. Uh, ten days after you sign the contract is done. Cooling period they call it expired now. So you're firming up the deal. They give us two percent of the four percent. The other two percent. When you close the deal, actually. They, so if they got yeah. the 2% up front and yes. the buyer doesn't close, does the broker have to pay the 2% back? Yes. yes. So are some, there a lot of brokers that yes. are going to have to come up with money to pay back the uh, right. the developers? Correct. And that's why brokers are panicking right now because one of the transactions in our own office, one of the, one of the project actually, 17 people, they did not close it. 17 buyers on in one project, they, we saw 37 units in one project, 17 of them, they did not close. So now we have to go back to our agents and get them to pay the developer back, pay us so we can, because they paying the brokerage, right? And we're paying our agent. So they have to pay us, so we have to pay the developer. And That's going to put those brokers at risk. Agent. That's going to put those brokers at risk, and it's going to put yeah, you at risk. Not really, because... Uh, Personally, uh, what I'm doing, I don't know how the other brokers, most of the brokers that they have experience and they've been doing this for a while, I'm sure they're doing the same thing that I'm doing. So when you're picking up your that parcel of the check, um, that, that 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 first installment of the check, you sign an identity where you keep it says that you're keeping it safe if this deal doesn't close or the buyer defaults and the developer demands the commission back, you have to give it back to me within five days. If not, from any other transaction that you have, I'm taking that money or I have to go borrow money now and bring it back. Unfortunately, most of the agents, they spend the money before even they get the check. When they get the paycheck, the commission check. I, I think that's probably the case. Uh, we're going to yeah. take a break uh, for some messages and come back in two minutes uh, with uh, Akbar Zera talking about these 10 reasons why he thinks this situation uh, has come to pass, uh, which is a crisis. Uh, within uh, the condominium, the pre-construction condominium awesome. business. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask him as well, not right away, but later on, after we go through these 10 reasons, whether there's going to have any knock-on impact into other sectors of the real estate market. Stay with us, everyone, back in two minutes. What is it? Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. Uh, we're chatting tonight with uh, Akbar Zera. He is the uh, founder and owner of Kingsway Real Estate Brokerage. He's uh, been in the real estate business uh, for 
for several decades. He knows it really well. He's got numerous different uh, real estate agents that work for him. So he's got a really good sense of what's going on in, in, in the GTA, the Southern Ontario real estate market. And he has had a lot of activity in pre-construction condos in the past. And so I think he knows this uh, market uh, well. And he says that people are in panic mode right now in the pre-construction condo uh, industry. Uh, Akbar, you said you had 10 reasons why this situation has come to pass. Can you share those 10 reasons with us, please? Sure, sure. I would uh, love to share it because uh, this is what I share with my agents. I have time to time. I have training for my own brokerage and so on. I'm just going to, before I get to that, I'm going to read a couple of, uh, just summarize a couple of uh, articles that I came across actually regarding the condos. Number one, um, uh, the, the gentleman that I have a, a lot of respect for, him is a friend of mine. Uh, he's, his name is Ben Myers, and he's the president of Open Research and Consulting. He's reporting basically that um, developers are uh, increasingly hesitant to launch a new high-rise project in the greater Toronto area, GTA, due to market uncertainty and lack of confidence in in reaching their pre-construction sales target. Uh, this gentleman is, is an in-depth in pre-construction, basically. It's somebody that I, I always have respect and I, I look up to him uh, for his researches and his comments and his, his articles that he writes. Um, um, why are they panicking? Because the sales dropped, as I mentioned earlier, over 70% sales of condos dropped in GTA. And, and as I mentioned again, there's 10 reasons that I have uh, I'm going to share it with you uh, why this is where we are at. Number one, I'm just going through my notes here that I made for myself. Yeah. Number one, as you recall, Brian, and our audience, they know that um, the Liberal government basically banned foreign buyers uh, about two years ago. And it was supposed to be one year, but they extended again. So who are the foreign buyers? Buyers are buying properties in Canada that they are not Canadian from anywhere, from US, China, India, Iran, or wherever. So, and, and if you look into it, who were these foreign buyers that they were buying the condos? Um, government issued a report that there are only 1% or 2%, which was a, not true at all. Um, why I'm saying that strongly, because look at what happened. The minute that they banned that, the, 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 the sales dropped. In my opinion, my research is and so on, there's over 35, between 35 to 40% of this condominium pre-construction condos they were purchasing by foreign buyer directly or that indirectly. Directly, basically, they were coming and buying it and no question asked. As long as they would put the down payment, they were buying it. And that took away 30 to 40% of the buyers. They disappeared because of the foreign buyer and it's still in effect. Right, that's the bad thing. So that was one reason. Number two, increase of price. Condominium in three years ago, four years ago, in Mississauga, we were selling for $500, $540 per square feet. Today, even in Hamilton, you can't get that price anymore. Over the three years period, Brian, the, the dollar per square feet for pre-construction condos skyrocketed. It's almost doubled. In Mississauga, actually in 905, the reports out there again, they are selling over $1,100, almost $1,200 per square feet. Oakville, Wellington, Hamilton. And that's a lot. Let me put it in perspective. You're buying a 1,000 square feet condo, you're paying $1.2 million for a shoebox. Would you buy it? No. No. So, you know, it's gone. Now, is it the developer's fault? Are they that greedy? No, not at all. What happened with pre-construction, I'll go through this step by step. Number one, um, but, you know, during the pandemic and after pandemic, what happened? The price of, first of all, let me back up before the price of the materials, it's the land. A lot of group of those, those, those hedge fund companies, they form a development company, they collected money, they jumped into a hot, red hot market of condominium development in GTA and around the area. Some of them with no experience whatsoever that I know them personally. They bought land for a high, high, high price. In Mississauga, I'm aware and I know of it. I have a piece of land that sold $60 million for an acre of a land to build a condo. I'm sorry, but 
to make sixty million dollars to just break even, not even calculating cost of the material and the contractors and municipality development charges and stuff like that. Okay. Second thing, so they bought the land too expensive. Way expensive, way so, more than what they So the market. condo prices went up and the land prices were so, went up. So I'm saying why the condo prices went up. Number one, the land that developer purchased, they purchased, they paid too much money for it, for the cost of the land. Number two, municipalities, they saw this opportunity, development charges anywhere from $8,000 per unit jumped to almost $50,000 per unit. The government, municipality, city. So municipality development fees went up dramatically. Went right back 10 times. Okay. And I'm not talking about just Toronto, Mississauga, Hamilton, everywhere. Yeah. So that's another reason. The third reason basically is contractors. At all this construction development sites start popping up like a mushroom everywhere, we run short of contractors to finish the product. So what happened with contraction, contractor, as they saw the demand, their cost went up. They start demanding for money, more money, obviously, because they were on demand. And the developer, they start competing with each other, paying more and more and more, got to the point that insanely cost up to get that right now, the challenge to get the contractors to finish the job is a big challenge. Right. So Third, construction fourthly, prices went up. Yes. So fourthly, I'm just calculating those down. Teaching, teaching price are going up. These are the cost of inventory, uh, cost of the building a condo. So fourth reason is, is the cost of, of course, material. The shipment of material that coming from China event up almost four hundred percent. Four hundred percent increase. Four hundred percent. I do the pandemic and so on with over four hundred percent. So most of the stuff that they are bringing in because of producing it is much cheaper in China than in Canada or in the United States. So importing a lot of material that you see in the condos from China and even up. So you add all those together and the cost of the marketing, marketing the big time cost of marketing. So if there were five, 10 developers that you would see 10 condo building that was going in, say four condo building that was going up in Mississauga, now you would competing with 10 others. Now there's 15 condo developer in Mississauga competing with that, that one buyer. So what they did, they increased their marketing cost, marketing budget. So you add up all that together, so now developer has to calculate that, right? And pass it on to the buyer. That's why you see from $550 per square feet jump to $1,100 per square feet cost of a condo that a buyer has to pay. Now, most people have said it was because of low interest rates, so people were willing to pay too much. You're, yes. And you're saying that it was construction costs that caused it. Construction and then the mortgage rate, of course. So the developers, the salespeople, just like Akbar would say, okay, Brian, you're buying that at 2% mortgage rate, here's what you're going to pay. However, that's not the case today. Today, you're not paying the 2% mortgage rate. Today, you're paying the 4 or 5% mortgage rate. And that's why, as I said earlier, there's so many assignments out there that the purchaser that they bought based on the promise of they're getting 2% mortgage rate, now they have to pay 5% mortgage rate, and they don't qualify. They don't even get the mortgage. They cannot get the mortgage. And they go in default. That's the crisis that will happen. That is what's happening. You know? So, and, and, and it's all come back. To Some builders, honestly, they don't make even 10% profit margin on a project that you can go. Well, going I've on. been told that actually a lot of developers, you know, hold back uh, 10, 15, 20% of the units or, or, you know, they get their construction financing after they've sold 75, 80% of the units. And, uh, and then they've got to close, they got to finish the construction, close on that to 75 to 80% to pay back the construction debt. And it's those last 10 to 15% that they've held back that they got to sell to make their profit. And so if so, the condo market is terrible and they can't sell that last 10 to 15 to 20%, they're not going to make any money at all. Not at all. Here's a prime example. One of a big, well-known luxury development company in, in Toronto, um, they borrowed money. They bought the land in a very prime, prime, the most, you know, best location in Toronto. 
um, they borrowed money from two big banks. And they were supposed to deliver two years ago. So to pay the money back to the bank. But they didn't even, they, they uh, just started construction and the bank basically pulled the plot. So we want our money. Delay, 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 delay. So they put, and that's what puts them in a pressure that, you know, we're not going to go there. We're, not gonna, we're just going to give people's money back and thank you very much. But they still have a mortgage to pay on that bank. The land that they purchased and they paid a high price, they have to come up with the mortgage. And that's why some of one of them in Barry claimed even bankrupt. Very well known long term developer went bankrupt, claimed bankruptcy. It's, but, it's crazy. <laughs> what, but what, 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 no real estate broker, Brian, talks about this. No real estate agent talks about this. Then yet they are advertising, and this is the best part. Now, the developer, mind you, they come up with a creative way of selling it to the public. They try everything possibly that they could convince buyer that this is a good deal, come on, buy it. Well, example, they're, they're, giving, they're giving rental guarantees, they're giving free lockers, they're giving uh, free um, uh, parking spaces, yeah. they're, uh, they're guaranteeing 2.9% uh, mortgage rates. Right. They're Everything doing a whole bunch of things to try to hold offer. price. Yeah, look at it. They're also offering some of the vendors, they come up with the, offering your two years mortgage, they'll pay it. The developer will pay your two years mortgage. But still, they are, they are struggling. And yet I see brokers out there, they're bombarding. Agents are socializing on social media. They are advertising after advertising, advertise this project. But let's be honest. I personally, I tell you, my realtors here and my brokerage, don't please just stay back, relax. It'll come back. But when, we don't know. Maybe two years from now. No, no time close next month, next six months and so on. I don't see that. I don't see it at all. I'm told it's, that this year, 2024, will be the year of the greatest delivery of condominiums in history. So yes. more condos are actually being finished this year Correct. than ever before. And 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 so isn't that going to mean that everything that we've been talking about is only going to get worse? It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. We're going to face a lot of challenges. Even in the recent condos, we are facing that, which I'm going to touch on it. But today's subject mostly is about pre-construction. So those delivering, as you're absolutely right, Brian, those are the ones that sold four years ago, five years ago at a very, very low price. You remember, I was talking about $500 per square feet, $550 per square feet. Those are being delivered, no problem. Because that was the price then, not today. Today, we're talking about the pre-construction that they launched it and the sales office is empty. Sales office is empty. You know, so so it, the, you know there's 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 a couple other stuff. Um, you know, with the government, with the uh, again mortgage rate, um, with the with the uh, development charges, with the mortgage qualification that we are doing, with the capital gain tax that they came in, capital gain tax, and then in, in the investors like yourself, like me, I'm looking and say, okay, so I used to buy this condo, flip it before the construction finishes, flip it before the project finishes. Make a quick box and walk away, right? So it was subject to 50% capital gain tax, of course, right? But now it's 100% capital gain tax. Is that going to help Ryan to come forward and purchase something? No. So pretty Not much for investors. Have, yeah, investors. So about 30% of the buyers in the pre construction condos, even more so, I would say stronger, I would say about 40% of them, they were investors that they either bought it to flip it and make quick buck or to rent it out. Or finish it, close CIBC it. CIBC came that's out that's with a report a week ago that said that 81% of pre-construction condo buyers were negative cash flow if they were yes. renting it out. Yes, yes. With the high mortgage rate and the high cost of the, the maintenance fees and taxes and what have you, negative cash flow. Now, what is happening really in reality that nobody's talking about it is that most of investors, they have other options. They are investing elsewhere. Outside the country, they go and buy properties in Punta Cana, Tulum, Mexico. I have an agent down south of Panama, Greece, Turkey, Dubai. Dubai is a big, big thing that's drawing all the investors from Canada to Dubai. They buy in Dubai. Canadian investors are going to Dubai instead of investing in Toronto. That's really wonderful. True, true. They have shows after shows. They come here, they present it through the brokers and so on, and they're selling in the back. Florida, Florida market picked up 60% and 
and and majority of the buyers that they buy in Florida, they're Canadian. Sixty percent of the buyers in Florida, you think, are Canadian? They're Canadian. You know, well, it is warm and sunny there. We got to take a break for some messages. We're going to come back uh, in just two minutes with Akbar Zera from Kingsway Realty. Um, I'm going to ask him. But whether this is going to have contagion, whether it's going to spread, whether it's going to go to other segments of the real estate industry. Stay with us, everybody, back in two minutes. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. My guest tonight is Akbar Zera. He is the founder and president, uh, owner of Kingsway Real Estate Brokerage. He's been in the real estate business for a long period of time, and we've been talking about how bad the pre-construction condo business is right now. Uh, uh, sales down uh, 66% from last year. He says 75% from uh, a decade ago, um, and that uh, we're in um, panic mode, uh, is the way he described his brokers. Uh, Akbar, in addition to what you've described, I get almost on a half daily basis uh, an email about a reduced price on resale condos uh, and also reduced price on single family homes. And then also assignment sales of townhomes and single family homes that are being built. Right. So I got to ask you, is this negative situation in the pre-construction condo business going to end up impacting the balance of the real estate industry? Yes, that's correct. Uh, we have um, a report from uh, MLS system that came out again just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it, it's affecting the resale market, especially in condo high rises. In Toronto, I have a report here in condo in Mississauga, not Mississauga, in GTA basically, which is Mississauga is part of it. Um, it dropped about um, to to about twenty eight percent dropped. So um, let me just add this, Brian. If you are a buyer out there that you're sitting with the cash and you want to put somewhere, I would say right now, pre-construction condos, forget it. Don't go even close to it. Don't even talk about it. Don't, don't even go close to a pre-construction. Don't even think about it. Seriously, I'm saying that. So look at the uh, resale. The resale value, as I said, currently, it's half of the cost of what you would pay to a, a pre-construction and get the same rent it just take the calculate just calculate it's 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 not difficult so you're saying that real sale so if pre-construction condos are at 1000 to 1100 bucks a square foot you think you can buy a resale condo for 500 to 600 bucks a square foot correct so just now i'm um, going on the market today on 80 absolute right across from my office you know, beautiful two bedroom, two bathroom, parking included, locker included. I'm just listing it for for six forty eight. It's going on the market today. Beautiful unit, soft penthouse. You got a hundred eighty degree of lake view and so on for six hundred forty, and that's nine hundred fifty square feet. Say say a thousand square feet. So what's the cost of that? Six hundred forty dollar per square feet. Same unit it sells over million in a pre construction, and on top of that. You have to pay $80,000 for parking and $5,000, $6,000, $8,000 for a locker, depending on which, which development project you're going to. So what do you can get with? On M-City, two-bedroom condo. M-City is a brand new condo that just finished. Actually, they just registered, just registered, delivering it to the banks. M-City, two-bedroom condo, a two-bathroom, is renting for $3,600, $3,400. Same condo. For same rent. So why would you pay a million dollar buying a brand new condo as in, as, a, as an investor and get thirty thirty four hundred dollars say rent where you can buy at absolute and pay the same price? It is just you so, know. Uh, sorry, great. is absolute the Marilyn Monroe Tower? Correct. Well, Marilyn Monroe considered as those two towers, fifty and sixty absolute. But the one that I have is 80 absolute. Even in Mary Monroe off of that building, I can get you a unit two with a minute for under seven, around seven hundred thousand dollars. But it's it's an older building. It is older building. But what's the difference? As an investor, you want to buy it and rent it out, right? You're getting the same rent for half a price of what you would pay for the same size of the building. Oh, you send me the listing. I want to check it out. Ah, uh, it's, it's vacant. It's going on the market today. <laughs> But what about what about 
you know, my argument that it's going to have a, a spread. So you're talking about resale condominiums and, and resale condominiums, you say, are half the price. But I'm getting, I'm getting reduced prices on single family homes as well. Right. That's correct, too. What's happening, basically, is that the consumer's confident it's gone. Okay? Consumers are out there. I'm talking about buyer, referring to the buyers. And, and the Bank of Canada, of course, comes up with a drop in the mortgage rate. Now, watch this, though, Brian. Quarter percent drop of mortgage rate, it does not impact what we are dealing with this depressed, I call it depressed real estate market. It's not helping. Let me put it in perspective. If you're buying a townhouse for $700,000 in Mississauga you, or anywhere, you're putting $200,000 down payment. So you carry mortgage of $500,000. This quarter percent drop in the mortgage, basically, for every $100,000, you're paying $16.85 less. Meaning, on a $500,000 mortgage that you're borrowing, pretty much you're paying less than $100 less for your mortgage. Do you think that's going to increase the consumer's confidence to come in the market and buy? Not at all. Is not impacting at all. But I heard broker after broker after agent after agent saying, "Oh, wait, wait! When the when the government of Canada, when the when the when the Bank of Canada reduces the interest rate, the market's going to take off." Uh, when did an agent say that it's not a good time to buy, Brian? <laughs> this is what my pet peeve is with these agents. They just get on the social media and a selfie video and so on. Rush buy now because quarter percent went down. All the property is going to price going to go up. Yes, where? How? I don't see it. Do you? I, I know. As I say, I'm getting I'm getting emails getting you know, every half a day on reduced prices. I've, there's exactly. a condominium, uh, there, not a condominium, a townhouse project in Oakville that right. uh, is doing assignment sales on townhouses. Yes. Yes. Prices are dropping. It's not going on. But every single agent says, best time to buy. Always is best time to buy. And that's all they know. And I think they're not doing any favor to any buyers. I've, I've been told because... that uh, that recreational real estate is down as well, about 30%. Is that, is that the cottages case? cottages and so on. Of course, it's cross. It's cross. It's across the whole industry, pretty much. From what about, is it, is, it, is it all price- Categories are luxury homes down as well, or luxury is it just home sort is of down big time? Like the number of the sales on a luxury home, it's even worse. It's, Why would it, it be worse on luxury homes? One would think that those are going to be typically owner occupied and paid with cash rather than mortgages. There are less buyers because what happens is that Aqua owns a three two million dollar house that I'm selling it for two million dollar, and it makes sense for me to move up to a three million four million dollar a better home, double the price, and so on. But if I cannot sell my $2 million house, I can't buy the $3 million. It's just like a chain, you know, connected to each other. The guy that lives in a condo, that's $700,000 buying a $1 million house. But if he can sell his condo at $700,000, he cannot buy the $1 million house. He cannot move well because he needs that money. He needs that equity. Makes sense. If you had a whole bunch of small-time investors that were buying three, four, five, six pre-construction condos, and they were leveraging up with their home equity line of credits to do so. And they can't qualify, they can't close, and they're gonna be sued by the developers. And you've got this contagion that's gonna go from pre-construction condos to resale condos to, to potentially pre-construction townhomes, uh, to potentially single family homes, to potentially resort real estate and, and luxury real estate. Isn't this going to have an impact in the whole real estate market? It is. It, it already, I feel it. People that are in the industry, they see it. Our sales office are down, even, as I said, aside, I have a, I have a pre-construction division that we used to do phenomenal with pre-construction. Uh, a bunch of people that we train them, they are specializing in pre-construction. They know all the projects. We have a platinum access to every single project in GTA and outside GTA. And also, we have a big division, which, as you know, I have uh, hundreds of agents, or 200, 200 agents, uh, than resale. Resale market is slow. It is slow. And it's not only my brokerage. I'm talking about the whole GTA. It's slow. Everywhere. I'm told that... These are sitting on the market for months. I was talking to one of the 
top, 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 probably you know who I'm talking about, uh, agent, broker, uh, yesterday, we were having a drink together, and I was talking to him, he said, Akbar, we had a listing in Brampton, it values above 1.8 million, Brad. We put it on the market for 1.2 to get multiple offers to sell more than 1.8. So what happened? Did you get any offer? Yeah, we did. How many? 11. You got 11 offers? Yeah. But the highest price was 1.4. 1.4. It appraised at 1.8 million, but they got 11 offers and didn't sell. So did they did they contract with one of them? No. No, they just put it back on the market for 1.8. My own agent had a had a, a, a detached home in, in Earn Mills. She put it on the market three times. So she put it, first was 1.3 million, dropped it for one two, then dropped it to 9.99 with the offer date. She got only one offer. At 999, the owner didn't so take it. You were in the business in 1990. Yes, I was. Uh, sales went down by uh, the selling prices, real estate market went down by about 20%. I'm told. Right. Mm -hmm. What's I the think, right what's the right strategy in that kind of situation? Just sit it out and wait? I think I think right now I say this over and over to people. If you don't need to buy, Brian, don't buy. Stay put. If you don't have to sell, don't rush it. Stay where you are. Market gonna change. It's not gonna stay the way it is. Is the price is gonna go lower? Yes, it will. We'll see drop in prices. Is it gonna come back? Yes. When nobody knows where, even those guru market researchers and so on, they can talk, put a date stamp on it when. But just a guessing, just like yourself and so on, I think in a year, year and a half, we'll see a rebound on the market. At Barzera, um, Thank you very much. We're going to take a break Bye. for some messages and be back in just two minutes. And, uh, and we're going to talk about what we and what governments should do in this incredible situation that Akbar is talking about. Stay with us, everyone, back in two minutes. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio while we're on Saga 960. Really interesting, in-depth conversation tonight with Akbar Zero, who is the uh, president, founder, owner of Kingsway uh, Real Estate Brokerage. He's been in the real estate brokerage business in the GTA for a couple of decades. Uh, he lived through the 1990 uh, crash in the real estate market uh, that I think was down about 20%. And a lot of people said it wasn't going to happen, but it happened. And uh, and so I've got to ask you, Akbar, you know, we talked a couple of months ago about the housing crisis in right. the greater Toronto area and how it was unaffordable and we needed to have government take action with what's happening is maybe just the market taking the appropriate action and we're going to have this crash. So government doesn't need to do anything. Just wait till everything gets cheaper and everyone loses money. Or is there something that government should be and could be doing? Well, there's a big difference between uh, nowadays today and, and in 90, early 1990, when you and I were around and we saw what's going on with the market and what have you. So what we witnessed is in 1990 is, uh, remember the interest mortgage rate was 16, 17% broad. Today, we are not there. We are, we are still, in my opinion, the mortgage rate is reasonable, but it could be better. Uh, the earning, the affordability is one of the biggest issues. And I think that's gonna be one of the major topic of uh, coming election that we see in, in, in Canada, uh, where the housing is on top of the list. So I don't. I'm not a politician. I don't want to go into politics. I don't. I don't want to say anything that it's against any parties or so on. But with all fairness, the Liberal Party, the current government, has not helped at all. If anything, they made it worse and worse and worse for consumers, for the buyers and sellers, for the public out there, and to do with real estate. And we touched on some of them, like with banning fee. Uh, for foreign buyers, the foreign buyers, we're talking about the mortgage rate, we're talking about municipalities and so on. Uh, one of the things that I have to share with you, I think in the last time that we talked about the real estate quickly, uh, was about um, those, those government-owned uh, land in GTA and outside of GTA that sitting there, I'm talking about crown lands. So I think government should take some steps looking into that and, and make it available for the developer to develop for an assignment, like for example, just for the first time home buyer to get them back in the market. I think that would be a great idea. Second thing is, as far as cutting all these red tapes and what have you, development charges and so on, 
these are all passed on to the buyers, whether you like it or not. That's what's happened. So municipalities has to take some action with the government funding or whatever in order to help the customers out there. And there's a few other ones that, since we are running out of time, we'll leave it for another time to talk about it. If you were advising a individual that, that needed to buy today, yeah. what would you tell them? If they need to buy, that's a big word. The difference between they want to buy or they need to buy. Okay, they want they, they need a house. Would you yeah. tell them to buy? Would you tell them to rent? Would you take tell them take advantage of the the cheap scenario? Would you say, you know, the the right market is uh, is condos, and so buy a real estate condo, or say no, you can still buy a single family home. Tell me uh, what advice you would give I to someone that needs say, to have a place to live. Yeah, I personally would say that not every property that's on the market is the right price, right market price. If you get a good deal, that's a sweet deal that you know that you're getting the price, good price on it, buy it. Otherwise, if you can wait, wait. So you're saying the cons uh, the condos are going for six hundred bucks a square foot resale condos. And resale so that house. would suggest that pre-construction condos have to come down to that. What about single family homes? Is there a, a comparable do they do single family homes sell on a per square foot basis or on a room basis or what? Not really, because they are each individual. If you walk into my old residence, Joan Drive, for example, you get a house that's three million dollar, and you get a house that's one million dollar, right? So, so it's scenario by scenario, listing by listing. But if you're working with a good agent that can come up with a good market evaluation of the property, say, okay, Brian, a comparable property to what we are looking at, it's selling recently for say two million dollar. But if you can get this for one point five million dollar, that's a sweet deal. That's what I'm talking about. Same as condos, same as anything that you buy, you have to look at it that if you're getting a good bargain price for it, go for it. Otherwise, wait. I was told about um, a property and a house under power of sale. Do you get involved in those kinds of deals or do you of get course, scared big off? Time. Big time. I, I work with CIBC, Royal Bank and so on, TD Bank. I just sold one in Hamilton actually under power of sale. So they are popping up on the market. Yes. You see, it's going to come more and more. I was talking to one of the guys, that I, the lawyers that I work with for our sale. He said, well, I have 57 files on my desk. 57 powers of sale files you know, on his desk. On my desk, he says. Yep. That God, I'd like to talk to that guy. Uh, Akbar, <laughs> if, uh, if people want to make use of uh, your services, is there a website they should go to or how should they follow you or how do they, they can contact, just contact you? me directly? It's 416-823-3434 or look up on the Google akbarraj.com or akbarzoret.com. Akbar, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. You so know, I think uh, for everyone, Akbar's advice about sort of sit it out, uh, wait, makes a ton of sense. If you don't have to buy right now if you don't have to sell right now uh why would you that said the people that make the most money are the people that buy when things are out of the favor and so i'm not sure if they're out of favor enough yet uh, and i think that there's some more to go and prices will come down even farther and i happen to believe it's going to be in more than just the uh the condominium market i think it's going to spread uh, as 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 price declines typically do into other segments of uh, of the real estate business maybe not as much in the pro in the single family homes because there hasn't been that massive increase in supply in single family homes like there was in condominiums but i do think that prices are going to come down they should come down uh, affordability was uh, was you know crazy uh, a year ago and so if you don't have to sell if you don't have to buy maybe wait a bit and and rent that's our show for tonight, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I remind you, I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online at www.saga960am.ca. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Akbar. Good night. My pleasure. I'd say always.